Good day, everyone. Welcome to another paperback horror review from Franking Noise. Today, we're going to talk about Moon Death by Rick Collada. Uh, it was originally published in 1980, but this is a 1986 uh, Zebra version. Um, when I was kind of searching around on eBay and Amazon, I saw this book for $40, uh, which is a little ridiculous because I saw two of these at a local bookstore. Um, and we book in for 250 and I mean it's not perfect condition but there's no way I'd pay $40 for a book that's in its second printing so I don't get it but uh, hopefully you don't need to pay $40 for this it's a great book not worth $40 um, it'd be worth the original price if I paid what's the original price is probably what do we got here Five bucks Canadian, four bucks US. Yeah, it's worth that. But um, so yeah, getting to the story, uh, this book uh, centers around the town Cooper Falls, and it takes place around August twenty third to April eighteenth. And I'm assuming the years are nineteen seventy nine to nineteen eighty. They don't say, but that was when it was originally written. Uh, the main character is a uh, Bob we uh, soon learn that he's moving to Cooper Falls because he got fired from his old teaching job for um, raping a student allegedly he was never convicted uh, and the case was dropped and there's a little bit of a backstory to that it's kind of long but um, so there's a whole thing with his wife Amy as well and their daughter but it doesn't amount to anything so I really see no purpose in including his him having an, an ex-wife and a daughter, uh, it, I, it served no purpose at all whatsoever. So I, I don't know what the point was it. Maybe just to add some extra pages to his uh, book. I don't know. Um, so to sum up the story, it would be like werewolf stalks and kills town people. Main protagonist being Bob hunts werewolf. That's pretty much the gist of it. Um, and, but obviously there's a little bit more to it than that but if you had to do a real quick like 10 second review you could get away with doing that um, the back cover which is right right there I won't read it all but it gives into a gives a little detail and it's pretty accurate I mean there's no no BS on it and uh, even Stephen King like this I'm not sure if he read this in 1980 or if he read this in 1986 but it says like it's this one of his best horror novels he's read in the last two years. So, I mean, that would have been, like, between, you know, 78 or 79 or something like that. But anyway, he was barely... I mean, he was good by then, but he was just getting started, and he's already got his name on there. But this is a second printing. You know, off traffic. So Bob meets Lisa. She's a librarian in Cooper Falls, and they soon pretty much fall in love. And that love carries up to the end, very end of the story. Um, they have like a few little tiffs here and there. Uh, basically, it's Lisa not believing, you know, Bob's stories that there's a werewolf running around town. She still thinks like the rest of the town that it's a large dog. Uh, but we'll get more into that. So in this town, we also have a kid named Ned who's bullied quite a bit. And he has a domineering mother. Uh, he has a brother too, which uh, his brother's fairly nice. Uh, there's no real issues with him. Doesn't really take care of Ned. Doesn't really care about him, but he doesn't, you know, he's kind of nice anyway. Uh, just a typical older brother. Um, we also have the town slut named Julie, um, and she has also has a dark side as well, where she does uh, these seances um, that she actually masturbates to. I think there's two masturbating seances which uh, I kind of scratching my head on that but uh, she's throughout the whole story as well um, I won't sp I'm trying not to spoil much in this review um, but she's throughout the whole story as well during while you're reading it you know Julie's got something to do with this werewolf link uh, but you know when you find out in the end she's it's kind of predictable but yeah I won't spoil it but she's right from start to end just like Bob and Lisa, I will spoil that they're the only characters from start to end. Bob, Lisa, and Julie. 
But Julie being the uh, town slut, you also find out that everyone in this freaking town sleeps with everyone. And it's amazing that the whole town doesn't have syphilis. I'm surprised Lisa isn't contracted with anything because her husband, um, you know, is sleeping around with people as well. So it's just, it's hilarious, kind of. Uh, I don't know if that's typical in the small towns in the 80s, but... Um, where I live, it's actually pretty typical. I don't live in a small town, but, uh, you hear about it quite a bit. Um, so the, a lot of the story, and I would be repeating myself, centers around werewolf kills livestock at first, and then people, and then people want to hunt this thing, and then they either can't find it or they think they kill it, and then the next full moon, it kills again, same loop, um, People try and look for it, think they kill some large dog, but it's not it. Um, then there's also things like you find out in February, uh, a werewolf can change any time it wants. It doesn't have to be a full moon, which I've never really read before. Um, but it's in this book uh, that, you know, during the month of February, a werewolf can change any time it wants. And it's got a little bit of back history as well to explain that. But I never really read that before. I know it has, um, it also has where a werewolf has to have a piece of wolf fur with them, kind of like a charm, and I think that was in The Howling as well, where one of the werewolf guys, characters has like a pelt of a wolf kind of around him. Um, so it's kind of cool to see which uh, myths are in this werewolf book compared to other ones you may have read or other movies. Uh, there's of course the silver bullet thing, there's also... Uh, killing him by fire. Uh, I won't spoil the ending, but I mean, it's pretty obvious what they try to kill the werewolf with. Um, so, yeah, so that's a lot of the stories, kind of just a loop of what's going on. We also start to find out who the werewolf is. I think around halfway point, it starts to get pretty predictable. Same with Julie. You start to realize that Julie's linked with this werewolf. Um, but you find out who the werewolf is, and Oddly, there's also this white cat that Bob sees, I think, three times. It even attacks him and scratches him. And then you never hear about this cat again. At least, I didn't skip any pages. And I'm like, at first I actually thought this cat was Julie. You know, that she turns into a cat. But then, no, I was wrong. That doesn't happen. So there's this white cat running around a graveyard. And then it develops into nothing. So I'm a little confused. I don't know what this white cat represents. I don't know any other werewolf stories that have a white cat involved, so uh, maybe I missed something. I don't know. If anyone knows what this white cat might be, let me know in the comments. Um, but yeah, so yeah, there's there's more deaths. Um, there's also kind of a little plot where the police um, find out Bob's past, that he had raped this uh, student in his old uh, school. And so that surfaces with these news clippings. So they actually start to think that he might be killing some of these uh, people and passing it off as a werewolf. Because um, he, he, of course, is blabbing around town. Bob, of course, is blabbing around town as a werewolf and no one believes him. Um, so he actually gets fired from his teaching job in Cooper Falls because the because he won't cooperate with the cops. The cops sort of blackmail him and tell the, you know, the school board that this is Bob's past, so he gets fired. Then he also, Bob just ends up leaving the town and moves to Florida because he doesn't know where this werewolf is, so he just figures he's not going to have anything to do with it. Um, he also got fired, so he moves to Florida, and then he, the news starts surfacing at Cooper Falls back in Florida. He realizes it's getting serious. Now he's worried about Lisa, so he goes back to Cooper Falls. And I thought that was kind of pointless. Why, like, you know, he should have just stayed in Cooper Falls and it would have saved, you know, maybe a whole chapter or half a chapter because it ends up going to nothing. So, um, yeah, so he goes back to Cooper Falls and then basically tells Lisa, okay, I'm going to kill this werewolf. I don't care if I die trying to do it. No one else seems to be doing it. Uh, the cops aren't believing anyone, they're not believing me, so I'm just going to kill it myself. So he grabs some silver bullets and pretty much prepares to do a one-on-one -on -one with this werewolf, because he knows who it is, too. 
Um, he's also seen the house, Ned. Uh, he's also seen Ned's house as well, where the family uh, has got has had two relatives die in that house. So there's also a secret kind of going around in that house as well. The Simmons, I think their last name is. Um, so, yeah, that's how the story ends. Um, it's, I'm not going to spoil anything. The werewolf dies. Bob basically kills the werewolf. with uh, Then they use silver bullets and a combination of fire. Um, it's actually a good scene because the werewolf has a choice almost between, you know, going after Lisa which I think he doesn't want to, or, uh, and Lisa's also got a silver cross, too. Um, then that's another backstory. Uh, they use a silver cross to ward off the werewolf earlier. So, uh, yeah, so it's kind of a neat scene. They're on, there's, like, two bobs on one end of the bridge, Lisa's on the other, and the werewolf's in the middle, and he's stuck. He probably knows he's going to die. And he does. But then there's a kind of a plot twist at the last, very last three pages of the book, um, which I won't spoil, but it was interesting. Um, I expected it, but uh, I didn't expect like 100% of the plot twist, but yes, uh, it's still interesting. Um, so yeah, like I said, this book uh, is very fast paced, lots of short chapters, short breaks, uh, which makes it a very quick read. and. Uh, yeah, it's a little predictable. There's some things that don't go, uh, you know, the way that uh, I thought they would, or they don't go anywhere. But uh, still, I, the fact that I didn't want to put it down at times um, while I was at work. Yeah, I read at work, <laughs> uh, but I didn't want to put it down at times. Was uh, means it was a good book for me. So um, I recommend it, and I give it uh, four bony fingers out of five. So thanks for tuning in. Um, my next video will be a July haul part two. I know in a previous video I said that's all the books I was going to get in July, but I ended up getting a $50 gift card for one used bookstore. So I mean that I got a lot of books for there. I also got two books for 48 cents. Um, so I'll be talking about that in my next video. Thanks for tuning in.